you just got this great idea for a melody or a hook. Maybe it's just a chord progression. And what do you do with it now? You hop onto your computer, you pull up your DAW, and you start adding tracks, and you start routing to make sure that you, everything's recording and you're getting signal. And before you know it, you're 10, 15 minutes into the time that you could have been recording already. You know, having that starting place is absolutely crucial, and it's a game changer because it really just takes your mind off of the technicalities of everything else that's going on and allows you to focus on the music. So let's hop into Studio One and let's build out my recording template. And at the end, you guys can grab this for yourself. There's a link down in the description. It'll be up on the screen as well. But let's hop into Studio One and let's build out the Floodwater recording template. So we have a blank session that's pulled up here and you can see it's just aptly named Floodwater Studios recording template. So this is how I set up what I use when I want to record. Now in my studio, I have a couple different interfaces that are going right now. I have the Scarlett Focusrite 18i20 and I also have the Focusrite 2i2. Because I have two tube preamps that are being run off of the 2i2. So everything is set, which means I have eight inputs on the 18i20, so eight XLR hard inputs uh, or quarter inch inputs, and then the two from the other interface. So what I wanna do is I want to add inputs, I wanna add tracks for all of my inputs that I have available. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna come into tracks and we're gonna add tracks. We're not gonna name it anything, uh, but we wanna add 10 tracks. So now we have 10 tracks set up that are here. We wanna go in and we wanna route all of these right now. So that way, once we're ready to go, the next time we have that idea, we can just choose a track if you're recording a live instrument and then you're good to go. So we're gonna to come to our mix tab and it kind of has everything a little bit laid out right here uh, just because of my setup. Now, I do have some things that are specifically labeled also. So input number one, and actually let's just go to our IO setting so you can see all of this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight are for the Scarlett 18i20. These two down here I've labeled tube mic pre left and tube mic pre right because I have two separate units that are sitting over here. Now I have them all monoed chosen for the actual interfaces themselves. So number one to the Scarlet, number two to the Scarlet three, so on and so forth. Here you can name these whatever you need. You can double click. So right now the Aston Spirit microphone, this is our main vocal mic here in the studio. It's always set up, ready to go. It's always plugged in. It's on the same input on the interface that's ready to go. The ribbon microphone and the SM57, those are on the guitar amp. They're on my AC15 all the time. They're ready to go. They're hooked up, they're plugged in. So in side studio one here, when I go to the, the IO section, I know the ribbon microphone SM57, that's on the guitar amp. If I want to move them and use them for something else, that's fine, but I know what inputs they are because with my interface, everything's kind of routed through the back into a snake and then plugged in that way. So instead of going, what's plugged into the red cable? What's plugged into the yellow? I already know, it's already mapped, it's labeled. So six, seven, and eight, they're open. Their outputs are kind of on that snake down on the floor, but they're labeled also on the snake. And then the tube mic pre's, they are here for the two art uh, preamps. So to keep it separate, because they're both kind of scarlet interfaces, the, the focus right here is that I have. Um, I named the second interface, the 2i2, the arts, that way 
just in the system they look different and I don't get confused with that. So I have these set up one through 10. Again, number two here, it's just open. I kind of go back and forth with this one. It's normally a quarter inch that I have plugged in so I can just throw an electric guitar in there or a bass, start playing right away. Number one is always my desk mic. And then everything else we already went through here. So we have these set up and they're routed. Again, if you don't know how to route them, if, if you don't have them set up normally for your IO settings, you'll find again, the interface to the top, the inputs to the side, and you just choose which one just by simply clicking. So you can click around and line them up. I go one for one. So input one, two, channel one, two, two, same thing going forward. So we have that set up. The next thing that I like to do is, and we've talked about this before, is kind of anticipating the sessions that you're going to be working on. Now, for me, that is... I'm, I'm going to have drums, so I'm always going to want some sort of drum track in there. And again, we use Easy Drummer, so we're going to grab Easy Drummer 3. We're going to throw it in here. And here we're going to do a little bit of work as well because we want everything to be finalized when we go to export stems to move it into our mixing template. That way everything's already set up. So we're going to hop into the mixer of Easy Drummer, and we're gonna grab everything here and change the outputs. Now, instead of just the basic studio drums that come here, I do have a user preset for Floodwater drums. So I'm gonna pull up my Floodwater drums, and we're gonna do kick one and two, kick effects, we'll do three and four, snare top, five, six, seven, eight for bottom, Toms get linked together, but it's a stereo track, so they'll still do left and right for everything. So we're going to do 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, and then 19, 20. So I'd like to have both room mics in there because we'll treat one as a far room, one as a near room uh, type of setup and be able to mix those differently and affect those differently. So now that I have these set on multi-track outputs, we're going to come back here to our mix window and we're going to click, if it's not already highlighted, we're going to click here to show instrument rack and then click on our easy drummer and we're just going to turn on all the way down to 1920. So these are all here. And then we're going to name these also. So these we can name ahead of time. You don't have to name the other ones. So here we have them named kick, kick effects, snare top, bottom, toms, hi-hat effects, overheads, room, and the smash mic, crush mic, trash mic. Actually, I like trash mic better. Let's, let's make that trash mic. Because then... We can take this one, we can distort it, we can do all sorts of things and, and make it absolutely crazy. So that is the third step. We have our audio inputs set up, our tracks set up, routed correctly. We have our drums, if you're using Easy Drummer, set up and routed correctly. And then we also want to come in... I like to just think of everything that we may use. So I'll come in here... We'll go into presence. We're going to add just a simple piano. Want to get just a full piano in here. We're going to do another instance of presence and we're going to add an electric piano because I love electric piano. We're just going to do a little Rhodes clean. We'll let that load up. And then I do like to have some sort of other options where myself, I like to use pads every once in a while. So I'm actually going to grab this new lead architect from Studio One. And we're going to throw that in there. And I have been loving the floating pad, which is... Very nice. I'm 
So we'll have that set up. And then the only other thing that I will kind of set up is we're just going to put in like a simple synth if you want it. That's that's one thing. It's preference. So we're going to grab Mai Tai, throw this in here. Don't need anything completely crazy, but something that we can mess with still. So we're just going to go to lead and just go right here to the attack key patty. It's a basic synth. Um, you can mess with everything else that's in there to kind of get the sound you're looking for. Um, now here, I want to name these because everything would look pretty confusing. Just reading presence, presence, lead architect, Mai Tai. So just so we know that they're piano, electric piano, pad, and synth. And lastly, one of the final things that I like to do is add just some simple effects, especially if you're recording somebody else, a vocalist perhaps, that they tend to be picky when they're recording. Sometimes they want some reverb. Sometimes they want a little bit of delay. Just having that set up, um, it doesn't have to be the final reverb, doesn't have to be the final delay, because you have your favorite saved in your mix template. So just adding something simple. So we'll come in here. There's a lot of stuff happening here. So I'm just going to kind of condense it. And then we're going to add a bus channel. We're going to add a bus. So we're going to add two buses here. We'll expand this out again so we can see them a little more clearly. So here we're just going to grab a simple simple room reverb just to allow them to get something in their heads. Um, again, it doesn't have to be anything completely crazy. Just a little bit of a room verb, which is good there. You can customize that however you need to. And then we're going to grab a little bit of an analog delay. We're just going to set that to quarter notes. So that way, it kind of just blends into what they need. Don't need a lot of feedback. Again, customize that however you need to. Um, but it just kind of, for those pesky musicians and, and pesky vocalists who want to hear a little bit of reverb on their voice, this will accommodate that. And again, you can choose whatever reverb you'd like. It doesn't have to be just a simple room reverb. Uh, it could be whatever you want, whatever delay. It doesn't have to be the final one, though, so keep that in mind. Although, if you do find something or set something that you like, save that as a preset. That way you can use that in a mix template later. So now we have a tracking template, a recording template set up. Everything is good to go. And when you get that idea, you come in, you just click on record. Everything's good to go. You heard my voice double a little bit there because it's inside Studio One. It's in the DAW set up, ready to go, and you don't have to worry about anything. Now, again, if you're doing this from scratch, all we want to do now is we want to come up here to file and we want to save as template. So now that we're saving it as template, we can change the title if we want. So Floodwater Studios recording template, you can create a subtitle or a description. Don't have to, that's not a big deal. And then you can change the icon if you want to, and then just hit okay. So now it's saved as a template. So if I go back to the home screen here and I want to click new over here, we have different templates that studio one has, but we also have the user templates. So if we come down, we can click on floodwater studios, recording template. We can hit okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Simply choose your track, record enable and get your idea as fast as you can from your head into your DAW. And that way you're off to the races and you're not going to lose anything in the process. I hope this has helped you guys out. It takes, as you've seen, just a few minutes to get this set up inside your DAW. And this is the same for any DAW out there. So if you're not using studio one, 
that's fine. You can still set up templates. It's quick. It's simple. Just routing everything to what you specifically have. Now, if you would like my template, you can head to floodwaterstudios.com slash recording. From there, you can download this, customize it to your needs. So obviously you may have a different interface. You can set everything up. It's going to be this song file specifically. So when you open the song file, make your changes and then you can save as template and you'll be good to go. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. Appreciate you very much. And we'll catch you on the next one. And Hey, before you go, if you wouldn't mind hitting like, and subscribe, if you did enjoy this, that would help me out tremendously. And uh, if you look over here at this video, YouTube thinks you may like that. We'll catch you on the next one. Go record something. See ya.